Hello. Today I will present my work entitled The Urban Renewal of Hamam Leaf, the case of Avenue Casino Habib Bourguiba. The city of Hamam Leaf has known major changes that have affected its natural environment and landscape building. The urban sprawl has reached its limits and the population has increased considerably. The strong landscape potential, its location close to the capital and the presence of thermal springs have made an attractive seaside site since the 18th century. The city is rich of architectural and urban heritage. In the following context, the study tries to demonstrate the different uh, urban and architectural transformations of Hammam Leaf by focusing on the lecture of different modification of the Avenue Habib Bourguiba as a case of study. This study starts by examining urban sprawl of the city since the, its first establishment that shows that this sprawl is no more possible since the urban fabric attempts its limit. Uh, since the 70s, the different development pattern allows a densification of the urban core where the study was carried out. Photos and postcards dating from the beginning of the 20th century show the state of the occupation of space. This allows tra uh, tracing the evolution of the avenue and its various mutations. Since Venetian times, the thermal springs were famous. Thermal uh, establishments, the Hafsi dynasty confirmed the curative practice by the use of ancient installations that endured during this period. The Bailical uh, Palace, in order to benefit from the thermal uh, springs of Hammam Leaf, is the Bay Ali Pasha built a first pavilion and a caravanserai in 1750. On the road connecting Amam Leaf to Tunis and near the Bailical Palace, a new thermal establishment was built and it was opened to the public in 1893. Located between sea and mountain, Amam Leaf was development on the plain on the sea front. In 1882, the section of the Tunis Hammam Leaf Railway line was opened to the public. A station was built in front of the Bellical Palace. The casino was inaugurated in 1895. It is located on the edge of the beach and materialized the extension of the axis that connected the Bellical Palace with the train station. This, this axis was the first urban core of the city. From there, the central square located between the beach and the railway line was born. The city is located between two natural barriers. Its urban extension was essentially lateral on both east and west sides. The urban sprawl was in continuity with the initial framework. It took place in two times to the west between 1920 and 1948, to the east from 1948 to the end of the 70s. Between 1920 and 1948, the city expanded to the west over a length of 105 kilometers in continuity with the initial frame. Since 1947, the urban sprawl continued eastward. The urban sprawl continued eastward and the city reached its limited around 1977. The westward extension continued and construction became denser. The new neighborhood was mainly residential and the subdivisions provided housing. These sprawls did not provide any tertiary activity zone. After all the various steps of urban sprawl, Hammam Leaf became a larger city with an area of 16,000 hectares and a population of over 42,000 inhabitants. With such a situation, the city cannot limit itself to its initial functions. It must find the new attractive functions adapted to the needs of its size population. 
In this sense, the development pattern have reclassified the city center as a very high density multifunctional zone. As you have seen, Avenue Casino, currently called Avenue Habib Bourguiba, is the very first axis. It is oriented north-south. It measures 580 meters of length. The avenue is straight, marked in the middle by a central place, the roundabout. Orthogonal roads cross the avenue, forming a regular shape, urban layout, and rectangular islands. Two radiating uh, uh, roads cross the axis and meet in the roundabout, forming four triangular islands in the south of the axis. According to the different development plans, the avenue belongs to an area of existing facilities and is and is defined as a center of economic activities. It is a question of densification with vertical and horizontal extension. Since its creation, the avenue has integrated different functions. It is a dynamic access and generating transformations of housings into shops and services. The central square is a meeting place with a symbolic value. As part of our study, we compare the change made to the occupancy of 16 urban islands located along the avenue. The specimens are numbered and positioned on the axis as shown on the pattern below. We have classified these modifications according to their typology in order to draw up the following table. Focusing on different transformations made to all of the buildings studied, two scenarios emerge. First, modification of the building while maintaining its initial structure and demolition of the building and replacing it by another. Concerning the modification encountered, we can identify four types. Modifications relative to the function, Changes in the high, which becomes more important. Fragmentation by multiplying the built masses within the same urban island. Alignment uh, of the building mass with the track. Some buildings have always been aligned with the boundary of the street. Demolition and renovation concern for 56% of studied cases, while 44% uh, main, uh, main, um, maintained their original structure with some modification. The table allows drawing the graph below. From the graph, we can identify some points. All buildings uh, that have maintained their original structure have changed function. The same thing happened to renovel, renovated spaces, except three ones, the roundabout, which retains its function as a public space, the post office and the train station. All, all the renovated buildings are higher, except the post office and the parcel of the roundabout, which does not contain any building. The increase of high does not affect buildings that have maintained their original structure. This is probably because of the strength of the structure, which is designed initially for a limited high and would not be able to support an extension in high. All the urban islands concerned by the different transformation are now occupied by buildings aligned uh, on the boundary of the street, except the Bailical Palace, where the retreat has been maintained. And finally, the category of modification that we found the least is the fragmentation of the urban island. However, and despite the various changes uh, identified above, the roads pattern and the boundaries of the urban islands did not change. As a result, the avenue has been able to maintain certain char characteristics. The length has not changed because of the two natural elements 
and the two monuments that blocked its extension. The width has not changed either. The values changes identified above generate a session lay. The increase in the flow of users and the urban congestion. In fact, the dump densification of urban islands with the multiplication of service and equipment spaces attracts a greater flow of users, a source of urban traffic and congestion. The roads keep the same initial width and uh, that causes urban congestion with traffic and parking problems. The loss of uh, sunlight, the height of the new constructions is greater than the width of the avenue. That generates the loss of sunshine of the entire neighborhood, especially concerning the construction on this avenue. Finally, the modification of urban landscape with the change of the initial functions and the densification engender the loss of the seaside and thermal character of the city. The urban pattern authorizes the construction up to 24 meters in height, which drive up the price of land. This encourages the demolition of all buildings to renovate them with new taller ones uh, that are be better suited to accommodate new functions, which are essentially tertiary, tertiary uh, but also more profitable. These demolitions accelerate the loss of architectural and urban heritage. Nowadays, Hammam Leaf continues to uh, experience major changes. It has been able to keep the dynamics of its center. The avenue continues to be uh, the heart of the city. The multifunctional area provides a mix of functions concentra concentrated on the avenue with seven floors high buildings. Some new uh, buildings uh, replace the old demolition ones, and no change uh, takes into consideration the seaside character of uh, the city. Finally, the Baylical Palace is squatted and dilapidated. Some of its parts are in danger of ruins and its restoration uh, is long to come. The casino is now closed despite the various attempts to revive it. The city continues to evolve and ensure a social and economic dynamic. However, what's the price? And thank you for your attention. <laughs>